Another simple thing to remember using your four fingers across four frets, your thumb should always be in the center of the back of the fretboard, like so. That gives you pressure at the back rather than so much on your fingers. Because if you've been doing the exercises getting to know your fretboard, you've already got a few marks on your fingers. That is normal. You're going to grow calluses and uh, your fingers will harden up. Depending on what sort of strings you're using to start off with. If you're using nylon strings, you may not be noticing it as much yet. But if you moved on to steel strings, you would definitely notice it. Now we're going to talk about chords, chord science, and chord shapes. I will show you the chord shapes, but I'll also tell you the science behind them. Like music theory <coughs> is based on mathematics. <coughs> Chords themselves is based on something more, slightly more like a science, where you put three things together, this is what happens. And we discussed earlier in the theory section that talked about the key chord scale, that in certain degrees they will always come up, major or minor. And it's very interesting how it actually works. It's as simple as basic chords, like the ones in your the key chord scale I showed you before, are based on what's called a triad, a tonic triad. And if you remember, tonic is the root, is the start of the key. In this case, it means the start of the chord. And the triad obviously means three. So we've got three notes come together to make a chord. And how it works is it's the first degree, the third, and the fifth. And that's from your root note. So, in the case of G major, it's G, B, and D. And when you look at the shapes, as they go through, we will go through them individually. And we'll look at the notes in the chord shapes. We'll start with three very simple chords. G, D, and E minor. So, E minor. The three notes involved, again, is the same thing. The first, the third, and the fifth. So E, skip F, you go to G, skip A, you go to B. E, G, B are the three notes involved. And we'll come back to that when we practically do the chord. D. If you haven't got the science yet, we'll go through it again. D. The three notes involved in the tonic triad are the first, the third, and the fifth. The first being D, the third being F, and the fifth being A. D, F, and A make a D chord. 
and it's a D major chord. G. If you did as I did earlier and wrote the numbers on your fingers, on your first pointing finger or index finger, you will have one. On its next finger, it says two. On your ring finger, if you're married, will have three. And your little pinky finger, which is vital, is number four. All right. So these are going to show us where to put our fingers on the fretboard to make shapes. So first, for the G chord. Finger number one. will be on the second string, which is A, in the second fret. Finger number two will be on the top E string, the low E, on the third fret. And that is the note of G. Okay, and at the bottom, your pinky, on the very bottom high E string, your pinky, or number four finger, will be on the third fret. You can also put finger number three right above it, on the B string, in the third fret. Right, this is where it gets interesting. Remember the thumb. The thumb technique should start straight away. Practice now, making sure the thumb is in the back and it's folding in a cup fashion like that, right behind your chord shape. So no matter what you do with the, the shape, your thumb should always be in the center of the back of the fretboard. What you'll find is you may not be having a perfect, pretty sounding chord like my G. What I want you to do is go through every single string, individually, one after the other, and listen for things like that. Hear that dead string? Be the type of thing you'll get, or fret buzz. You don't want that. You want a clean, clear sound. You want to use the very ball of your finger. The fatty part of your finger. And it wants to be as center of the fret as possible. And what that means is in between the two steel bits. So it should look like that, pretty close to the center. And work your way through. And every time you hear something odd, you go through the checklist. The ball of your finger. The thumb. Putting pressure with the thumb. Sometimes maybe you need to put a bit more pressure onto the ball of your finger. Center of the fret. Every time we do this, go through the checklist. Next chord is D. The interesting thing about the D chord is it actually looks like a D when you look down upon it. So, taking your first finger and putting it on the G string, which is the fourth one going down on the second fret with your first finger, the ball of your finger, <coughs> center of the fret. 
Next you want finger number three and you want it on the string below, which is the B string, second from the bottom, and you want it in the third fret. Ball of the finger, center of the fret, thumb at the back. Finger number two wants to go on the high E string at the bottom, on the second fret. And the strings you're playing is not the top two. The two low ones, you're not to play them. You play from the D string, the third one down. You play from there down. And let's go through this chord science. Because you're playing four notes. If you notice in G, you are still playing six notes. If you go through the chord science, you will find your D open. Here we go, that fits the signs. That's the first. The second note you're playing is on the G string, second fret. Oh, it's A. Still fits the signs. The third note you're playing is on the B string, third fret is D again. We've repeated the D note twice in this case. The fourth and final note you're playing in the chord of D is F sharp. F sharp is also in the chord size. So if you've got several notes, you'll find you're repeating something. And it should make sense in the chord signs. If not, you've got another note, and there will be a reason for it. But we'll go through that later. Finally, E minor. Possibly the easiest chord to play. You're only using two fingers. I'll tell you right now, this is a secret for later when you're doing bar chords. There are four chord shapes in which your finger number one, which is used for bar chords, is confiscated. And one of these chords is E minor. And if you're going ahead to learn any other chords before you watch another video of mine, the four chords where your number one finger is confiscated. They are E minor, E major, A minor, and A. E minor. Your number two finger is two frets in on the A string, which is a B note. Right below it, on the D string, two frets in, is an E, using finger number three, and you play every single string. Okay, more, more chords to come. But in the meantime, practice these three. Don't think about rhythm too much yet. Think about changing the chords and playing them really clearly. Remember, thumb always at the back of the center. Use the ball of your finger in the center of the fret. Catch you again soon.